Hey everybody, my name is Cooper and welcome to a pickup video. Um, for those of you who have been following my channel, I've been doing daily vlogs and I appreciate all the support on those, but there have been a few people who have been vocal about only wanting pickup videos and I just wanted to let you guys know, for those of you who are not interested in the vlogs, feel free to skip them. There will still be pickup videos and other types of videos on the channel. So don't worry, none of that stuff's going away. The vlogs are just in addition to everything else. So. I'm going to start off by showing three things here that are really big. They're in my way and I want to move them. I got the dance pad for the GameCube. This is the the Mad Cats version that comes with uh, MC Dance Grooves, which I have the game to complete this box set here. The box isn't in great condition. It's got a big crease down the side and stuff like that. It's not in great condition, but I found this at the Goodwill Outlet. And because the dance pad has a cable, I got it for the electronics price. So this was 69 cents per pound and it probably weighs a pound and a half. So this was like a dollar something. So I thought that was really awesome. And the other two things I have here, I have the Nintendo Labo variety kit. This is still sealed. I got this essentially for free because I bought a guy's collection and these he just like included with everything. So I got that one. And then also the Nintendo Labo robot kit. So I actually was not planning on buying the Nintendo Labo stuff just because it's expensive and it's not something that I would actually play. But to get them both for free included in something I was already purchasing, I thought was an incredible deal. And I don't know why he would include them because the stuff I bought from him was all retro stuff for the store. And that was the only current stuff. Well, he also had the Nintendo Labo customization set, still sealed. The box is pretty banged up, but still, like I said, I wasn't gonna buy them anyway, so to get them for my collection for free, essentially, was really, really awesome. So I'm probably never gonna open them. I'm never gonna play it, so I might as well leave them sealed. But uh, now that those big items are out of the way, I'm going to insert a clip here um, I, ha I got a bunch of VHS tapes from the Goodwill Outlet. Um, lots of anime ones, but they're all video game related. There's a couple other VHS thrown in here that I picked up as well, but I decided to keep these for the collection because I thought they were very cool. They are related to video games and everything, so I'm going to hold on to those. And then I'm going to show you guys a bunch of uh, accessories and figures and stuff like that before we get into the actual games. Um, so I picked up the this Nintendo... Super Mario mushroom like lotion dispenser, like soap dispenser type thing. I think technically it was, when I looked it up, it's a lotion dispenser, but it can be used for hand soap or whatever you want. So I thought that was pretty cool. I'm gonna hold on to that until uh, eventually when I'm, when we move at some point, I'm hoping to get a basement with a bathroom in it that's specifically for the game room and deck it out with all video game related stuff. So that will definitely go in there. Um, also included in the collection that I bought from that guy was the Edge gamepad for the NES Classic. Uh, once again, this is still sealed. I'm probably never going to use it, so, but I figured I would just hold on to it because it was included. I also got a carrying case for the Nintendo 2DS. Once again, factory sealed and from the same collection that I bought, I believe. And then I got this SpongeBob bobblehead and it has the THQ logo on it. So I don't know much about this. I'm assuming it was some sort of pre-order bonus for a SpongeBob game. Um, it's 2006, so probably for PS2, Xbox, Wii, something. I'm not sure, but uh, this was like $2.50, so I grabbed that. Then I got a <laughs> 1993 Mario mask which is in excellent condition for being this old and for being such flimsy plastic. I would expect this thing to be destroyed, but someone kept it in good shape. It's got the original price tag on there. It's got this tag down here with the date and everything. So my friend Josh threw this in for free on a deal that we were doing. It's me, Mario. I'm sorry if that's going to haunt you in your dreams. Next up, I got this really cool uh, Super Mario Maker Wii U cardboard thing. And it says, take this card to the register to purchase this item. So I'm assuming that this came from like a Costco type place. Uh, it's got a little rip up here. Not really sure exactly what store it's from, but it's got to be something like Costco. 
But I thought that was very cool, double-sided, and it was in the same collection that I got with that other stuff. Next, I got a Sears Shop at Home catalog, like video game catalog here, which is really awesome. My friend David found this at the outlet and he gave it to me, but it's, it's old school. It's all N64 era stuff, but they have... Uh, prices in here. It looks like this, basically the entire thing. It's got an order form and then it's got uh, prices for everything. There's PC games, there's Genesis. What is this one? Turbo Graphic CD, I think? Um, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Saturn. N64, NES, Sega CD, Jaguar, 3DO. So there's just tons of stuff. Really, really cool to look through. I thought that at some point I might do a video on this and kind of compare some of the prices to what they are now because obviously some of the games are worth way more, but some of them are worth way less too, of course. But yeah, there's Tiger Electronics and Strategy Guides and Pico Games and Neo Geo. So... Very, very cool. Then I got, uh, also from my friend David, another VHS tape. This is a Nintendo 64 promotional one for uh, Rayman 2 and Rocket Robot on Wheels. And this one is still actually factory sealed. So I'm trying to get all the Nintendo related VHS tapes and I was happy to get that one. I also got two more little pamphlets here. We got a PlayStation one and a Nintendo one. Then I got the Club Nintendo 3DS XL Legend of Zelda pouch. This is cool because obviously Club Nintendo is no longer around. And so we got this pouch in the same collection with the Labo stuff. Then I got a an Ivy Soul Calibur 2 figure, which is really, really cool. This is still brand new and everything in really good condition. I have the Necrid figure from the same line, and it looks like there's five total, so I need three more and I'll have the full set. I think the two that I have are actually the two least cool ones. So they also have Nightmare, Astaroth, and Valdo, which I'd love to get. I think Valdo is the coolest looking one, but very cool. Got this from the Vancouver Toy Show. Someone traded it into my booth. And so they traded this for like $5 worth of games or something. I don't really remember, but I thought that was a great find. Also from the Toy Show, I got this Resident Evil Zombie and Forest Spayer figure set here. And I paid $5 for this. It's in excellent condition. The packaging is not bent or the plastic's not crushed or anything. Very, very cool. I love collecting these video game related figures. And a lot of them are from the Capcom, like the Video Game Superstars Presents. I've got a lot of the Street Fighter uh, versus X-Men ones and stuff like that. So I thought that was very cool. Next, I got this really big Nintendo logo banner, which I believe is from a Taco Bell promotion, but it's pretty big. Hopefully, you guys can see it. It's kind of shiny. It's got little grommets in the corners to hang it up, but I thought that was really cool. I think I'm going to put this on display in the game store because I simply don't have a lot of room here in the game room. I don't have a lot of wall space for stuff like this, but I thought that'd be cool to display in the store. Then from the Northwest Largest Garage Sale, I picked up the Versus Excite Bike Marquee. It was $10. And I actually got a bunch of other marquees uh, when I bought that guy's collection that I keep mentioning. Um, there's some other ones in there that I'm going to keep as well. There was a Mario Bros. one. There was, I believe, the Tetris one and like a Killer Instinct one. So I want to hold on to those, but uh, they're still up in the garage. So this is the only one I have down here to show, but I am keeping the other ones as well. Then ugh, I got the Zelda uh, Hyrule Historia and Arts and Artifacts books in that collection. Uh, also, a Factory Sealed Twilight Princess HD Collector's Edition Strategy Guide. And then I got some other guides and stuff from, I think from him, but also maybe from some other spots. I got the Secret of Mana Strategy Guide, the official Super NES Game Guide, the Super Game Boy one, which this came, I don't, it probably came, you could probably get it from multiple different places, but this is the one that came with the Super Nintendo bundle that I used to have, so I definitely want to hold on to that in case I ever find that again. I got another How to Draw Nintendo characters book. I have a couple of these. I think they're pretty cool. 
I got the Playing With Power NES Classic book, the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past Story and Art book, which is really, really cool. I don't know if I can flip through it too easily, but very cool. Then also a Twilight Princess GameCube version strategy guide. Get those out of the way. Uh, I think one more, well, a couple more things till we get onto the games. I got the Mario Kart telephone, which I thought was really cool, and I actually had a cool idea to maybe hook this up in the game store to actually be the game store's telephone. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Doesn't have caller ID or anything, but it might still be cool to have. If not, I'm just going to hold on to it anyway, because I think this is awesome. Then... I got the Mar Super Mario Bros. Dixie Cup Dispenser, along with a pack, a brand new pack of Mario Dixie Cups. So, it looks like there's actually three different dispensers, I didn't know, on the box there. But, I thought those were really, really cool. And then, a couple more accessories here. I got an NES Game Genie, complete in the box. Box is kind of beat up, though. I got a boxed gray NES zapper gun, and also a boxed NES satellite. So very cool to be getting some, some more boxed NES accessories. I used to have quite a few in my collection before, excuse me, before I sold everything. So it's been tough to try and find a lot of that stuff. Luckily I got, I've got two power gloves now in both uh, medium and large, and I just got those. So I'm building it back up, which is awesome. So. Now, getting on to the games. Actually, I have one. Actually, I have. Well, I have two more things. I got the Ninja Turtles garbage can. This is 1989. And this thing is in beautiful condition. I got this from the toy show as well for $15, I believe. And so, that's definitely going to be in the game room. And then I got one system, and that is a red Game Boy Advance SP in the box. I'm pretty sure that I didn't have this one at least in my spreadsheet. I have some empty Game Boy Advance SP boxes, but this one actually has a system with it. So I'm gonna look at my empty boxes and see if I have one of these already. It might be a condition upgrade because this one has a little dent here, a little tear in the artwork here. Overall, it's in pretty good shape though, and I'm glad to add that to the collection. And then on to the games. So I'm gonna start with Wii and Wii U. So I got uh, Breath of the Wild for the Wii U. This is just a complete copy. I got this from GameStop, and I used a coupon, so it was like $5 or something. I also got Disney Planes, which I still needed. And then a sealed copy of Sonic Lost World, the Deadly, Deadly Six bonus edition. Then I got a sealed copy of GoldenEye for the Wii, along with the t-shirt, which is sealed. Um, I bought this off of eBay, and it was, it was listed as brand new t-shirt bundle, so I assumed that it was going to come in the big box with the controller and everything, and it came like this, unfortunately. So um, I wanted to return it because I didn't want it like this. I wanted it actually complete and sealed, and they just sent me, an, sent me a full refund and allowed me to keep them. So these were free, and I definitely was not trying to get them for free. I really wanted the controller bundle, but I guess it works out in the end. Then I got the commemorative Super Mario Galaxy coin. I already had one of these in the collection, but it was missing this outer slipcover here. I just had this piece, and I know these aren't hard to find. I've had tons of them before, but finally found another complete one. And I got three Wii games, which are all factory sealed. Um, I got Wii Ski, which I believe came from the Goodwill Outlet, so that was like two bucks. Uh, Daisy Fuentes Pilates. I don't remember where I got that one. And then Marble Saga Paw which I think is a pretty cool one to get sealed. I got this from Conway Games at their 50% off sale, so I think that was like $7.50 or something. Moving on to original Xbox, I got two more Best of Platinum Hits games. I got Fusion Frenzy and also Mech Assault. Now, Mech Assault doesn't have a manual, but it's the same manual for any copy of the game, so um, once I go through the game store stuff, I'm pretty sure I have five or ten copies of that game, so... I'll just pull a manual to complete that, but um, like I mentioned before, I'm not really trying to collect Platinum Hits or Greatest Hits yet. Um, I plan to eventually, but I know that these Best Of ones are pretty hard to find, so 
whenever I see these and I don't have them, I am holding on to them. So I have a few so far. Next up is Godzilla Save the Earth. Pretty cool one. Also, Test Drive Off-Road Wide Open. Not a rare game or anything, but <laughs> didn't have it. And then I got the Forza Motorsport Demo, which I'd never seen before. Not that it's probably worth much, but it's got the, the demo for that. And then also the Xbox Live Arcade Disc in there, which I thought was kind of cool. I got two DS games here. I got Nintendogs, Dalmatian, and Friends, but this is the limited edition. I'm not really sure what that means, but <laughs> I decided just to hold on to it. Then I got a sealed Imagine Boutique Owner. Nothing special. Then uh, I got some Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, and Sega CD stuff. I got Crazy Taxi 2, Air Force Delta, Seaman, just the, the jewel case version, not with the outer box and everything. Jet Grind Radio, pretty cool game. Resident Evil Code Veronica. And then Sonic Adventure 2, which is pretty pricey. I didn't, didn't realize that, but it's like a $40, $50 game. And then I got Sonic CD for the Sega CD in the little cardboard case here. Very cool. Got that from my friend Luke for 20 bucks. And then I got Dracula Unleashed and Mansion of Hidden Souls. So nothing super special, but just games I didn't have. And then two Sega Saturn games. I got Alien Trilogy. And this game, when I got it, I actually thought that it was factory sealed. And then I realized that there was Sharpie over the barcode and it was underneath the plastic. And it was actually on the actual artwork itself. It's not even on the case. So I opened it up and of course it's not, it wasn't sealed, but that is Mystaria, The Realms of Lore. Still a cool game, but like I said, there's some Sharpie on there. So once I saw that, I was like, um, I don't think that's sealed. Plus there were some scratches on the case underneath the seal and the disc was not in perfect shape. So you could tell it was obviously opened. Next up are some Switch games here. I picked up the Wild Guns Reloaded from GameStop. I got Poi Explorer Edition from Toys R Us. Probably the last game I'll ever purchase from Toys R Us, but um, I got that. I played it for a little bit. Um, I did, I uploaded a video, like my first impressions on it, which was part of a vlog, but I did it at the end of the video. It's an okay game. I don't think I'll play it again, but it was, it was all right. Then I got Fate Extella, the Umbral Star. Got a sealed copy of that from Fred Meyer. I got the Flame and the Flood from Super Rare Games. Comes with the cards and the sticker and all that stuff. I got Splatoon 2. And then I got Fallen Legion Rise to Glory Limited Edition from NIS America. Pretty cool stuff. Moving on to GameCube games. First up, I got this like GameCube preview disc. It's still sealed. Then I got Mario Kart Double Dash, and this is the bonus disc edition. I didn't, didn't have this one in my collection. I just had the regular one and the, I think the not for resale case version, but this is the bonus disc one, so I decided to hold on to that. Then I got product number three. Fairly uncommon game. I don't see this one too often, so I was glad. I think I traded for this one. I also got in the trade, I got Rave Master, another fairly uncommon GameCube title. And then I also got Virtua Striker 2002. I believe I got this from a CD game exchange in Portland. Um, I've, I've have found two copies recently, so I'm not sure if that was exactly where I got it. Then I got The Hobbit, and the only reason I kept this is because it had the card, which is usually missing, so this is fully complete, and I'm glad to add that one to the collection. My PS2 version also has the card, which is very cool. I then got the Star Wars Rebel Strike Limited Edition Preview Disc. I love getting these little preview discs for the GameCube. I have quite a few of them now. I think this is my fourth or fifth one. Then I got Ikaruga, which I was very happy to knock off the list. This is one of the more pricey games I still needed. And uh, my friend Sean had a disc, and I had a case and manual, and so he sold or he traded me the disc uh, for like 30 bucks in trade credit. So I was able to complete that, which was very awesome. 
And then lastly for the GameCube, I got a factory sealed Canadian version of The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures, which is pretty cool. You can tell from that that it's a Canadian version, but still it is sealed and it is still North American, so I thought that was pretty cool and I'm definitely going to hold on to that. It's in really, really good shape too. Um, I was looking it over before and I couldn't see any sort of rips or tears in the seal at all, so... Uh, it just has like some surface scuffs and everything. I might send this in to VGA when I send in my next order. I'm not, haven't decided yet. Um, I got a couple PSP games here. I have The Legend of Heroes, got from my friend David. And then I also have Innocent Life, a futuristic Harvest Moon, which I got from Conway during their half off sale. On to Genesis stuff. Um, there's, no, there's a, there's, a couple decent ones in here. The rest are mainly just uh, fillers that I didn't have yet. So I got Mortal Kombat, Marble Madness, Road Rash, Alien 3, Championship Pro-Am, and then the two better titles I got are Super Hydlide, which I thought was pretty cool. And then the best one is Gunstar Heroes. And so this is a pretty fairly expensive title. I was glad to get this one. Uh, the manual's kind of beat up there. It's got a rip and everything, but still complete. And I'm not sure, but it looks like it might be a little sun faded. Um, I don't have a second box to compare it to, so I'm not exactly sure, but it, it looks a little sun faded to me. Then I got three Atari games here. I got a 5200 sealed copy of Pac-Man, obviously not in the best condition, but still sealed. That's the, actually the only 5200 game I have aside from the pack in with my system. Um, so, and then I got two 7800 games here. This one was technically sealed, but it was so badly ripped open that I just took the plastic off. But that is Donkey Kong. Still very, very cool. The box is, you know, pretty bad shape. And the, the seal, like I said, was like half ripped open. So I just took it off. And then I also got Tower Toppler, which is still sealed. Uh, it's still ripped open and stuff, but I'm just going to leave that one on there because it's not hanging off like the other one was. And then I got one Pico game, and that is Echo Jr. and the Great Ocean Hunt. And so my other Pico games are right down here. You can't see them, but I had seven. This makes eight. So very cool. On to PS2 stuff. There's some good games in here, and I'm not going to do these in any particular order, but I got the Genesis Collection, and then I got the Dot Hack GU Volume 1 Rebirth Collector's Edition with the figure. Picked this up from Epic Entertainment Exchange up in Longview, Washington for 100 bucks. Very, very cool. Awesome store. I got my favorite PS2 game of all time, and I don't know why I didn't have it, but I got Champions Return to Arms, the best PS2 game in existence. If you guys are fans of uh, hack and slash RPGs. I definitely recommend checking this out. It's it's the second one in the series. There's the Champions of Norath, which is the first one. Also a great game. They're extremely similar to the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games, which are also amazing. But I think out of the four that are on the PS2, this is my favorite one. And I got Serious Sam Next Encounter. A sealed copy of Guitar Hero World Tour. Got the Ant Bully. And normally, I would just put this into the store's inventory. The only reason I kept it is because it actually has the movie ticket with it still, which a lot of times those are missing. Then I got Xenosaga Episode 1. I already had 2 and 3, and I couldn't find a black label copy of this, but I actually found two of them. So I got one here, and I got one for the store. Then I got the Grand Theft Auto Stories Double Pack. Um, there's actually the regular double pack, which has uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City. This is the Stories double pack, though, which is pretty difficult to find. Got that for 7 bucks from Salvation Army. Then I got two cheap but weird games. I think they're fairly uncommon. I've never seen them before. That's why I decided to hold on to them. They're only worth like 4 or 5 bucks each, but these are the Konami Kids Playground Alphabet Circus and Toy Pals Fun with Numbers. So they're like little kids educational games, but I thought those were pretty interesting. I've never seen them before, so decided to hold on to both of those. Then I got Mystic Heroes, pretty cool. Also the Capcom Classics Collection. 
And then lastly, a sealed copy of SOCOM US Navy SEALs Combined Assault. I don't remember. I think I got this uh, from St. Vinny's, I believe, in, in Hood River, Oregon, I think, for five bucks. Moving on to PS1 games, and I got some really, really quality stuff in here. Um, I was fortunate enough to pick up a few PS1 RPG bundles, and so I was able to add some good stuff to my collection, and I also got some good stuff for the store because I already had a few of them. So uh, first up, there were two long box games. I got Twisted Metal, which is coming off on both sides there, so I need to glue it back down at some point, but for now I'll just leave it because I don't really care too much. And then I also got Warhawk, which needs to be glued down at the top. And then I got a sealed copy of In the Zone 98. I believe I got this for a dollar from the Northwest Largest Garage Sale. I got Monkey Magic, which is a game I've never heard of. And then I got Mega Man X6. I got Rampage 2 Universal Tour. The case has a huge chunk missing here. It needs to be replaced, but I got this for like four dollars or something from Conway when they were having their half off sale and it's like a 20 25 dollar game so I thought that was awesome I got Black Dawn Bust a Move 4 I love the Bust a Move and Bubble Bobble type games so that was awesome to pick up that was five bucks and I got Inspector Gadget and then on to the RPGs I got Thousand Arms Star Ocean the second story Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. Not an RPG, but still a fairly uncommon game. And I got Legend of Lagaya. Final Fantasy VIII. Yes, I did not have this one yet. <laughs> I only would come across Greatest Hits copies, so I finally found a Black Label one. Then I got Vandal Hearts II. Final Fantasy Origins. Final Fantasy IX. Same story with 8 and Origins. I just would only find Greatest Hits ones. Then I got Dragon Warrior 7. Vagrant Story. And the last PS1 game is Medieval 2, which I was very happy to add to the collection. My dad and I actually played through Medieval 1 and 2 back in the day together, so I love having those types of games in my collection. That was awesome. So moving on, I got two... Uh, Two NES games here. One of them is just a box only, but that is Bases Loaded 3. The box is crushed and beat up, but it's still there. And then I got a complete copy of Yoshi. I got this for 10 bucks from the Northwest Largest Garage Sale. Moving on to Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. I don't think there's any Game Boy Color. But I got a cartridge, not for resale, copy of Minish Cap from the collection that I bought from the guy. He was a big Zelda fan, so he had a lot of Zelda-related items, and... That was one of them, so that was awesome. Then I got Need for Speed Underground 2. I don't remember where I got this one. Then a lot of these are boxes only or boxes and manuals only. So uh, I think one or two of them had the cartridges, but they are Final Fantasy Legend 3. They're also all in really, really nice condition. Mario Land 2, the six golden coins. Donkey Kong Land 3. The Final Fantasy Legend, Mario's Picross, Donkey Kong for the original Game Boy, and then Marble Madness, which I already had, but this was a really nice condition upgrade, and this one is complete. Then I got the box, box and manual for Door the Explorer Super Spies. I found this at the outlet, so this was like a couple pennies. And then a complete copy of F1 Race in the big box with the with the four-player adapter. That one is complete. And then to finish off the video, I have complete in box N64 and Super Nintendo games. So I'm going to start with the N64. First off, I finally got a cartridge to complete my Mario Party 2. Really nice condition copy. And then I got the manual for Star Fox, which I needed. I got Turok, first one, Dinosaur Hunter. Killer Instinct Gold, box is pretty beat up, but I didn't have it yet. 
And then the reason I got that Star Fox manual is because I had already gotten this, but it didn't have a manual, and that is Star Fox, of course, in the big box with the Rumble Pack. So I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, so... It didn't have the manual, but it was complete otherwise. I need the baggie for the Rumble Pack, but now I can add the manual into that and have a complete copy. Uh, the cardboard insert is kind of ripped up too, so I want to be careful with that. <clears throat> if anyone has an extra cardboard insert for this, which I don't know why you would without having the box, but I'm interested in replacing that insert. And I got the box and manual for Rampage World Tour. Once again, kind of beat up, but didn't have it. Then I got the Player's Choice Complete version of Star Fox, which comes in the regular size box with no rumble pack. Then I got Knockout Kings 2000. Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey 98. Bassmasters 2000. And the Player's Choice version of WCW vs. NWO World Tour. Which is a game I actually had as a kid, so I enjoyed that one. I think I already have the the first release version, but uh, for, for Nintendo stuff that are cartridge-based systems, so uh, NES, Super, 64, and Game Boy stuff, I'm keeping the player's choice copies when I get them just because the boxes are so much harder to find than like disc-based stuff. So I think I already had the Black Label one, so I've got, got the player's choice one now as well. And then on to the Super Nintendo games. There's some pretty good stuff in here. Um, I'm going to start off with a boxed cleaning kit. I have a different cleaning kit, which has Mario on the front cover, which seems like it's much harder to find, but I got that one now, so I've got both of them. I got a box and manual for Bassmasters Classic Pro Edition. No cartridge. Um, I'm trying to save the best ones for last here. I got Super Soccer. And then Tin Star. This is part of the 50% off sale at Conway. And then box and manual for Wolf Child. And Wolf Child is actually the first Genesis game that I had in my current collection. Found it at a garage sale a long time ago. And then some good stuff here. So four games or three games in one box left. I got a really nice condition upgrade, box upgrade for my Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. This is obviously in a protector, but this is in like near mint condition, so that's awesome. And then three more games here. I got Killer Instinct, and this doesn't have the Killer Cuts uh, soundtrack, but I think I might have an extra one, because um, I have the Killer Instinct Super Nintendo System bundle, which comes with it, but I think I have an extra one that's not with anything. I think it's just on my shelf with the other soundtracks, so I can put that in here to complete it. And then I got Earthworm Jim. I already had the second one, so getting the first one is cool. Kind of complete that little set. And then finally, I got Power Instinct. So, very awesome Atlas title that I didn't have. Uh, it's not in great condition, but it's really not that bad. So I was happy to add that one to the collection. And guys, that's going to do it for this pickup video. I really hope you enjoyed. I added a ton of really cool stuff to the collection. Uh, the only issue that I'm having now is that I'm running out of space. <laughs> and I've been so focused on working on the game store and getting stuff ready for that that I've been neglecting the game room, unfortunately. Um, I need to build another custom shelf to take up a wall that right now has two bookshelves. But it's the bookshelves where I have my Genesis and my Wii U stuff. But bookshelves are not great for holding DVD-sized cases because... They're so deep, and then there's like this much space between the top of the game and the next shelf. So it's a lot of uh, wasted space. So once I build a custom shelf for that wall, it should be able to hold all the Wii U, all the Genesis, all the Master System, hopefully all the Sega CD and Sega Saturn, and maybe even the Dreamcast. I'm not sure. I gotta, I gotta build it first, and then, you know, move stuff around. But uh, like the Wii stuff here, I can't fit a single game on the shelf. I have a stack down here that I have to put up there, but there's no room. I can't fit any more PS2 games. I can't fit any more Xbox games. So I'm really running out of room here. I can't fit any more GameCube games. So I need to do something. Um, I'm getting close to filling up my PS1 shelf as well. Um, all these double disc RPG cases are not going to help with that situation. But um, once the store is open and stuff's, stuff's moving, um, I'm going to get back to working on the game room a bit. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I'll do that. And then uh, hopefully 
film a new room tour after that. Um, I'm assuming it's going to take me a while, so don't get too excited. It's probably going to be uh, 2019 before I get around to doing any of this, but uh, that's something to look forward to at least. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, don't forget to smack the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again next time.